Hello everyone. Welcome to all in this lecture. So in this lecture, I will discuss load carrying capacity of a pile. So there are various methods to calculate ultimate bearing capacity for the pile. So in this lecture, I will discuss static methods for the driven pile in the sand and clay. Okay. So load carrying capacity of a pile. So there are different methods. So we decide the load carrying capacity of pile based on it should be safe against shear failure and it should be safe again uh, settlement or we can say settlement should be within the permissible limits. So there are two criteria on the basis of we decide the load carrying capacity of piles. First method is static methods. So in this lecture I will discuss the static method. Rest uh, method I will discuss in the coming lecture. So the static methods give the ultimate bearing capacity or ultimate carrying capacity of the pile for individual piles. We can write the ultimate bearing, ultimate carrying capacity for the soil QE which equal to QP plus QS. In this figure, you can see whatever the load are coming. Whatever the, whatever the load are coming, QU, that is, let me change the paint color. Okay. Whatever the load are coming, so that is registered by QS, that is, soft resistance and QP, that is the tip resistance, whatever the resistance at the base of, for the tip of pile. Tip resistance. So we can write from here Q U is equal to Q P plus Q S, where the Q is the ultimate failure load or load load carrying capacity of a pile, where the Q P is the base resistance of the pile or tip resistance of the pile, or directly we can say tip resistance. Q S is the soft resistance. Developed by the friction between the soil and the pile shaft. So dynamic formula, second method is dynamic formula, then in situ penetration test, then pile load test. So these three uh, I will discuss in the coming lecture. Now I will discuss static methods. Also by uh, calculating that uh, ultimate uh, failure load or load carrying capacity for the pile, we can calculate allowable load. And by applying the sum factor of safety, or generally factor of safety vary in the case of pile is 2.5 to 4. So static methods for the driven in sand. So ultimate ca uh, capacity for the single pile driven in, into sand. So generally, this is general expression we can write for sand and clay also. So QP plus QS will be equal, uh, summation of QP and QS will be equal to ultimate capacity of individual pile. So where the QP, we can write QP into AP or we can write QS is equal to FS into AS. Where QP is ultimate bearing capacity of soil. So this ultimate bearing capacity of soil QP, we can calculate by using some theory like Terzaghi theory. In the previous uh, lecture also, I have discussed this Terzaghi theory and, and uh, how we can calculate the ultimate bearing capacity of soil. So we can take, we can calculate from there only. Okay. So we will apply the Terzaghi theory and then we can calculate QP. QAP, AP is the area of tip. So suppose this is the pile. And uh, this is suppose D is the diameter. Okay, so whatever area at the tip. So what we can write? Cross section of this. So we can write pi by four into d square. So this is AP. AP is the average unit uh, skin friction between the sand and pile surface. Okay, AS is the effective surface area of the pile in contact with the soil. Okay, so here, suppose this is the pile and diameter is D. Okay, 
so surface area would be this cylindrical so how we can calculate suppose this is suppose length of pile is l so we can write is perimeter then length so we can write pi d into l so this will be the surface area so why it is written effective surface area in the some cases in the coming slides also you will see that all length of pile is not participating to take the load to share the load so what will happen in that in that case we have to deduct some amount of length because that is that length is length is that length of pile is not participating to share the load okay so that's why it is written effective surface area we have to take the effective surface area okay now we can calculate we can calculate uh, qp that is equal to qp into ap or qp we can calculate by using the terzaghi theory see in this case the the first expression that was cnc plus that is not written here because for the sand we know for the sand it is c zero so by putting the value of c is equal to zero the first expression will be zero so there we can write this equation so in this equation we know each and everything what is the q dash p gamma n q n gamma so in the driven piles the second term is very small this is we can say after conducting is uh, some uh, experiment and on the basis of some experience you can say the second term is very small so therefore we can neglect okay so you can remember this is the assumption compared to first term second term is very small so we, we can neglect so finally it will come qp is equal to q bar into nq now we can calculate the qs that is equal to fs into as where the fs is the average unit skin friction between the sand and the pile surface and where as is the effective surface area of the pile in contact with the soil so soil pressure in figure you can see so soil pressure that is normal to vertical pile surface is sigma h you can see this is the sigma h sigma h. so there is a relation between the horizontal normal stress to the vertical stress in case of soil so suppose at this point some vertical stress will be there sigma v sigma v okay so there is a relation between this vertical stress to the horizontal stress so ratio of horizontal stress to the vertical stress is equal to k and this k is the earth pressure earth pressure coefficient so we can write sigma h is equal to k into sigma v okay where the k is the earth pressure coefficient sigma is the effective vertical stress at that depth where we are calculating okay because in this case you will see because on the basis uh, according to the depth of the pile sigma v will change sigma v will change with the depth of uh, pile okay so uh, sigma v will change so wherever we will calculate the sigma v we will see at what location then we can calculate the sigma v and once we calculate sigma v we can calculate sigma h okay once we have the sigma h then we, then we can calculate fs so now in this so from here we can write see this is nothing but fs so complete a triangle then we can write 10 so we can write 10 delta is equal to fs divided by sigma h so from here we can write fs is equal to sigma h 10 delta and sigma h we can write k into effective vertical stress at that at that point k sigma of the fair for we can write fs is equal to k into sigma dash v 10 delta right
okay so where delta tan delta is the coefficient of friction between the sand and the pile material okay pile material can be steel can be wood can be concrete so on the basis of this what kind of material the delta and the k value change changing so in table you can find for steel delta is 20 degree for loose sand 0.5 okay concrete timber so effective stress uh, vertical pressure sigma bar v increase with the depth only at the critical depth dc below the critical depth value sigma v remains constant so this is very important we have seen that sigma v we can calculate at any point that unit weight of soil suppose gamma suppose in the dry condition and into h whatever the depth so this will give us the vertical stress at that depth okay but we will see in this case this suppose this is the graph of vertical stress and this is the depth okay so it will increase up to certain height and then it will become a constant so this height or this depth is called critical depth critical Okay, so critical depth and this critical depth is changing with the phi. Okay, so in this figure also you can see here you can say up to the DC height this uh, sigma v is increasing but up, uh, beyond the DC height this is constant. Okay. And this ratio of dc by b is uh, depends upon the phi value so once the phi value increase this ratio will be also increased so friction resistance q is now we can write so how i am writing like this so let's see q s we can write uh, f s into a s okay and if is we can write k h uh, sorry we have seen this we can write sigma h 10 delta a s okay so after putting the value of delta h in terms of k we can write k sigma v 10 delta a s okay so what we have seen on the on this graph this is the depth top to certain height dc this is changing okay and then again it is constant so this is this depth is dc okay so so what we do suppose this is uh, this uh, pile so we divide the pile in the number of layers and for each layers we will calculate the frictional resistance and then we will add so suppose this pile is divided in n 2 1 2 3 4 now i am writing for 4 only but we can write up to n okay so for 1 we can write whatever the area uh, just put the name so whatever the this uh, effective surface area that is h1 h2 h3 h4 more or less if that if the uh, uh, diameter is constant or this uh, interval is constant so as1 as2 will be equal so if it, these are changing so it will be changed so let put the name as1 this the sur effective surface area for the first layer and here the whatever the effective uh, stress is coming that is put the name sigma v one here sigma v two sigma v three sigma v four so now we can calculate total uh, frictional resistance so we that would be summation of qs1 qs2 qs3 
QS4. So what will be the QS? Use this formula. So K lambda into sigma V1 into AS1 K sigma V2 10 lambda AS2 and so on we can write. So this we can write in the form of summation. So that will be vary 1 to 4 but now we can write uh, in terms of n. So 1 to n k into sigma v 10 lambda is i. Okay. So now you are getting my point. Where the n is the number of layer in which the pile is installed. Sigma B1 the effective normal stress for i layer. Sigma S1 I, I the surface area for the pile for the i layer. So by simplifying we can write QS is equal to K10 delta into area of CB diagram into pile perimeter. So let me explain how we can write summation of i1 and k sigma v i 10 so area what area we can write so suppose diameter is constant only layer only, uh, only that uh, uh, thickness of the layer is changing okay so we can write pi into d okay h i can write because every layer for every layer their thickness is changing diameter is constant okay so what we can do we can write so this is constant this is constant this is constant so all constant just take outside this summation so k into 10 delta pi d summation uh, i 1 to n sigma v i h i see what is this this is the vertical uh, effective stretch at a depth for the i layer and this is the thickness of i layer so see the this see this graph and this is the uh, depth okay suppose this is the one of graph I made so see what this is denoting we can write in the terms of we can write in the terms of uh, integration or summation so what is the summation of CB into H so C uh, this is this uh, this is H so we can write we can write this is the this is giving the area under area under uh, area under this uh, area through the depth axis so depth axis is vertical downward axis we can say minus negative of y axis so whatever the area are coming in this zone for this area we can write summation of i 1 to n sigma v i h i Okay. So similarly now we can write K 10. Now we can write area of CV diagram through depth into what is pi d? What is pi d? Pi d is the pile perimeter. Okay. So we can calculate if the uh, the data is given in the uh, in the terms of layer. So we will apply. We will use this formula. If data is given or uh, data is coming in the form of graph, so we will use this form. Are you getting my point? Okay. So ultimate load we can write uh, summation of uh, QP plus QS, and so put the value of QP that is Q 
nq into ap and this summation into or also we can write qnq ap plus uh, k into tail de delta into area of cv diagram into pile perimeter so let's discuss some of the numerical problem to clear our concept see in the question it is given the concrete pile diameter so first note down what are the data given a concrete pile 30 cm diameter driven into the medium sand and and this all the formula we have discussed for the driven pile driven sand phi is equal to 35 degree for phi is equal to 35 degree nq is 60 dc by b ratio is 12 and gamma is given 21 k is given 1.0 10 delta is given 0.7 for depth of 8 meter estimate the safe load taking a factor of safety 2.5 okay so given diameter that is 0.3 meter phi is given 35 degree for 35 degree nq 60 dc by b ratio is 12 so now uh, calculate dc so what will be the dc dc will be 12 into b so b or d in the case of circular we can write b is equal to d so 12 into we can write d d that is 0 0.3 that is 3.6 meter now check the graph this is graph of vertical stress and this is the graph of depth so it will change it will increase sigma, uh, sigma v up to 3.6 meter and then it will become a constant right so let's find out key at the 3.6 meter depth what will be the value of sigma v so we can calculate vertical stretch vertical pressure at 3.6 meter depth that will be 3.6 into 21 so it will come 75.6 kilonewton kilonewton per meter square so here 35.6 kilonewton per meter square and the depth of uh, pile is 8 meters so rest rest 8 minus 3.6 length that is 4.4 meter up to that length the vertical stress will be constant okay now now we can apply the formula we can calculate the qp separately so qp is q and q into ap so we have the q we have the nq we have the ap okay so now directly we, we can calculate qs also what is the qs k 10 delta area of cv diagram into pile perimeter so by summation of this both we can write so let's add this both the value qp and qs so q what will be the q so q is the vertical pressure at the tip at the vertical at the tip what is the value of q so that is here this value so this value is 35.6 into nq that is given 60 plus ap into ap that is pi by 4 into what is the diameter 0.3 all square so this is q this is nq and this is ap now k that is given 1.0 into 10 delta that is given 0.7 into area area of 
CV diagram. So this we have to calculate this area. So divide this area into two parts. One part is triangular, and second part is rectangle. So we can write for triangle half into what is the length? Three point six into seventy five point six. Now plus this is the triangle part or rectangle part. Rectangle part length is four point four into seventy five point six into pi perimeter. So perimeter pi into d. What is d? Point three. So by calculating, you will get six twenty nine point seven kilometer. Six twenty nine point seven kilometer. So from here we can calculate allowable load. Q A, and that is Q U divided by factor of safety. So here the factor of safety given two point five. So six twenty nine point seven divided by two point five, you will get two fifty one point nine kilonewton. Two fifty nine point one kilonewton. In this question, one thing you have to remember: you have to understand this graph. And you have to understand that after the beyond the uh, depth of DC, that particular stress is constant. Okay, you cannot it will not increasing. Okay. Now come to the second question. A concrete pile 30 centimeter diameter is driven into the medium sand for 35 degree. That is data is given for the depth 8 meter. Taking factor of safety 2.5 gamma W is 10. Determine the safe load if the water table rises 2 meter below the ground surface. Okay, so we will see. First, calculate the what is the length of DC. So this DC we can write 12 into. D in this case, B will be D. So twelve into zero point three, that is three point six meter. Draw the graph once. This is the graph of vertical pressure. This is the graph of. This is the depth. This axis is depth. And this is this is vertical pressure. Okay, so uh, DC we got suppose somewhere DC there. So we can, we will calculate that uh, for the DC up to the depth of DC what will be the vertical pressure and up to the depth of. So we will calculate. First we will calculate up to uh, below the two meter uh, ground surface the water table below the two meter ground surface what will be the. Vertical pressure. So vertical pressure Q B at water table at two meter below below the ground surface. So we will calculate. Give the name. Two means a uh, two meter from the. Okay, so that will be uh, what is the value given? Twenty one into two, right? So it would be forty two kilo newton per meter square. So here, suppose this length is here, we can write two meter. That is forty two kilo newton per meter square. Now, now calculate uh, when the water table at three point six meter because this is the critical depth below the ground surface. Six v three point six. So what will come? Twenty one into two plus. So now uh, beyond this uh, two meter depth. And that uh, whatever the soil in the submerged condition, so we can write. And suppose this is the saturated condition. So 
1.6 rest uh, length is 1.6 21 minus 10 so it will come 59.6 kilo newton per meter square so here suppose here this value is again 1.6 meter so here we get 59.6 kilo newton per meter square now this this, this length is dc so beyond the dc it will be constant okay and the constant up to the length of 8 meter so this length would be 4.4 because uh, this length is depth, depth is pile is given 8 meter okay so and here is the value also 59.6 so if you want to calculate the area of this diagram, so we will divide in three part. One that is triangle, second part that is trapezoidal, third that is rectangle. Okay, so we will calculate the area. So now we can directly calculate the ultimate load. Okay, so now, now we will calculate ultimate load that is QU, QP plus QH, QP, Q and Q, AP plus here K, 10 delta into area, CV diagram into pile perimeter. Q is given, what is given? 59. Q is the vertical pressure at the depth. 59.6 into A and Q is given uh, 60 AP that is pi by 4 into T A square D is given 0.3 plus K that is 1 into 10 that is 0.7 into area now so we have divided in three parts so half into 2 into 42 this is for triangle now come to the trapezoidal so half into what is the length 1 point half into distance between the parallel side that is 1.6 into Summation of parallel side that is 42 plus 59.6 plus this is the trapezoidal, this is the triangle. Now come to the rectangle that is 59.6 into 4.4. Bracket close into pile perimeter pi into d 0.3. So we will get 506.94 kilonewton. That is Q ultimate load. So we can calculate QA that is Q U divided by factor of safety 506.94 divided by factor of safety is given 2.5. So it will come to zero two point seven eight kilonewton. Okay. So always uh, for calculate the diagram of CB diagram. So you have to see. So in this case we have divided in three part: triangle, trapezoidal, and rectangle. Okay. Now. Static method for driven piles in saturated clay. Okay, so ultimate capacity, uh, ultimate capacity for single pile driven into sand. We can write QP plus QS. So now here we discuss the sand, uh, clay, not case sand. Okay, so for the clay, phi is equal to zero degree. 
where the phi is equal to 0, 0 degree, so nq will be 1 and n gamma is equal to 0. So by putting the this all this expression nq, n gamma or nc whatever uh, in the Terzaghi theory we will get this result. So c and c plus q. Are you getting my point? Okay. So therefore the qp that is gross load we can say or gross or tip resistance that we can write c and c plus q into ap area of tip of pile. If you will calculate the net so gross minus overburden pressure or overburden pressure q. So here we can write so if you want to calculate qp so it will become qp minus overburden pressure that is q into ap right. So automatically you will see that c and c plus q into ap minus q into ap so this would be cancelled automatically it will come ap it will come c and c ap right so now we can calculate uh, qs so that is qs is equal to q c a into as where the c a is the unit addition or friction we can say develop between the clay and pile shaft CA also is equal to alpha into C dash uh, C bar. So, where the alpha is the addition factor and C bar is the average cohesion along the shaft length. So, you have to remember we are taking the average cohesion along the shaft length. Okay. So, we have to see this is average we have to take. Okay. Sometimes you will see the C dash is changing at the top, some value is something, and then at the bottom it is changing, it is increasing. So we will take the average value. So suppose at the top there is C T equation at the top C dash P and equation at the bottom C V T. So what average we can write? So average C average we can write C dash P plus C dash B divided by 2. We can write average or we can calculate average like this. For cohesive soil, we can write just uh, take the summation of QP plus and QS. You will get this. For very long piles, if the diameter is greater than, if the depth here the D uh, D is the depth here D is the depth is equal to greater than 25 meters. So the average unit skin friction, we can write FS is equal to lambda into sigma V plus 2C. So there is condition if the depth is here it is depth. This is depth, okay. So if the depth, you can write h also. So if uh, this uh, equal to greater than twenty five meters, so we can use if it's directly. Where the here see the equation and see with the vertical stress. Where the uh, lambda is a frictional friction capacity factor, and see the undrained equation. Here the sigma v is the mean effective vertical stress for the embedment length. Mean effective, okay. So we can see in this figure, uh, this lambda is changing due to pile uh, embedded length. So that is shown in the figure. So now I will discuss some numerical problem to clear our concept. So it is given a 30 centimeter diameter concrete pile driven into homogeneous consolidated clay deposit CU is given 40 kN per meter square, NC is given 9, alpha is 0, 0 0.7. If the embedded length is 10 meter, the estimate the safe load factor of safety is given 3.0. So this is the very easy question I would say. Just put the value and get the result. So first write then what are the formula we have. So we can write QP is equal to C and C. AP right and QH we have alpha C dash or C bar into AS. So directly we can calculate QP plus QH C and C plus AP plus alpha C bar into AS. So C that is given 40 nc given 9 
area area of the tip so pi by 4 to d square that is 0 0.3 whole square plus alpha that is 0 0.7 is given in the question into c that is 40 into area of sharp uh, area of uh, effective surface area that would be uh, pile perimeter into length or depth so that would be pi into d that is 0.3 into depth that is 10 meter so you will calculate by calculating you will get some value so 289.289.289.2 kilo newton okay so we have to calculate QA allowable load so that is QU divided by factor of safety so we can calculate Q 289.2 divided by factor of safety that is 3 is given so we can write 115 not 115 oh no it will come it will it will come 96.4 kilonewton okay so this is very easy question just put the value and get the result Okay, so next, uh, next question we have a concrete pile 40 centimeter diameter is driven 25 meter into soft clay. C is given 25, unit weight is given 19, NC is given 9, lambda is given 0 0.16. Determine the allowable load when the water table is at the ground surface. Okay, so uh, we have the D that is diameter. We have this uh, length 25 meter c comma nc lambda so determine the lower load when the water table is at the ground surface okay so now what we will calculate first we will calculate qp that is c and c ap C we have 25, NC we have 9, AP that is 5 by 4 into D square where the D is 0.4. So it will come 28.3 kilometer. Now we can calculate QS. See the condition here the depth is or length we can say. Depth is greater than equal 25 meter. So here the this is the 25 meter. So it is equal to 25 meter. So for this we can write FS. We can calculate FS. So where we can calculate here FS that is lambda into sigma v plus 2c. Right. So lambda is given. 0 0.16 into now you can see let me draw some figure so here we'll see the graph so it is changing like this so up to 25 meter depth what will be the value sigma v it will be 9 it will be cv will be at 25 meter depth uh, this uh, 25 into 19 minus 10. 10 I am taking the unit weight of water because this is what water level at this position. Okay. So water level is here. So this will be in the summer's condition. Right. So here I am assuming uh, gamma W is 10 kilonewton. 
okay per meter cube so uh, we will get this value and here is zero so we have to take the average value of this so average we will write a uh, zero plus here is a zero 25 into 19 minus 10 divided by 2 plus 2c 2 into c is given 25 so fc will come so I have calculated so fc is coming uh, if 814 814.4 kilonewton per meter square no this is not qc sorry some value are coming so let me read it okay so this is some value are coming you can calculate so now we can calculate the qs that is f h into a s so what will be the s so f c f so you can write from here so f into s that is subt effective surface area of the subt okay so we can write pi into d that is 0 0.4 into length that is 25 meter right so we can calculate so that you will get 814 point I have calculated some writing directly uh, 0.4 kilonewton. So ultimate load we can write QP plus QS. So that is 28.3 kilonewton plus 814.4 kilonewton. So that will come 844.7 kilonewton. Okay. So in this previous uh, slide, I have mentioned here. Here I have mentioned two things. When the depth is uh, less than uh, 25 meter, so we will use the alpha C dash to, uh, calcul uh, to calculate the skin resistance. If the depth is uh, greater than 25 meter, so we will use the FS that is lambda into sigma V plus 2C okay so uh, these are the uh, reference that i have taken to make this lecture so thank you in the next lecture i will discuss uh, some another method for the uh, load carrying capacity for the pile thank you